Okay, it looks like we're at the uh, appointed hour here. We will go ahead and call our inaugural meeting to order. This is the uh, first of many this year. Um, just a minute, we'll have our pledge to our American flag and uh, just a moment of prayer. Before we do that, I could ask very kindly of you to check your telephones, please. I guess there's still telephones. Yeah. I, say, I, I just used phone for so long it felt odd when I said that. Uh, not that you have it, but that it's silent if you would please. With that, if you'll join me, we'll go ahead and have our pledge to our flag. citizens and uh, watch over us, care for us. Tonight, Lord, I, I pray that your hand will be upon us as we go through our county's business and then see us safely home. Uh, I ask you, Lord, to, to forgive us of our sins, and uh, we ask these things in your name. Amen. <laughs> Start with the uh, chairman's report, and, and I have one just kind of a short uh, an update or an announcement. A few months back, we applied for a uh, little assistance, a Georgia Heritage grant, and I received word last week that we did in fact see uh, receive an award of about ten thousand dollars, and this ten thousand dollars is to help us as we prepare a study for the. Uh, the renovation or the restoration of our historic courthouse. So that uh, is at least a little bit of a, a welcome bit of news. We will uh, get right into our hearing and actions on zoning matters. And uh, at this point, what I'll do is I'll uh, turn this over to Chairman Houston. He, we, as I understand it, we have two uh, three zones. Okay. And uh, once he uh, presents the first application, we'll talk a little bit about protocol. We'll, we'll get into it. So, Mr. Houston, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first reason request uh, this evening, based on conditional use permit, Paul Metz is requesting a conditional use permit for an event venue on his 20-acre parcel zone at A1. The property is located on that 98 parcel 33-01 at the corner of Russell Road, Cooper Road in District 4. The vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission was a vote of 5 to 0 to recommend approval of this condition we used to make. Okay. What I'll do is I'll uh, open the this uh, business portion up by having uh, either Mr. Uh, Metz or a representative to uh, offer any, any comments in support of the application. And anybody else that would like to speak in favor, then we'll move to those that might be in opposition to it, and then I'll give uh, the petitioner uh, the, the right of rebuttal after that, and then uh, we'll move. So with that, as Mr. Metz. Do you have any uh, strong 
structures or anything there on the property? Not at this time. I mean, there's a, a well house, a barn that's falling down, a shed that's falling down. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Have you had any you know, thoughts or, or you know, schematic designs of what you might, the layout, how you want it to look or layout um, on the property? I mean, I'm just thinking about the neighbors that way, you know. Um, uh, every building that we have, uh, that we're anticipating is going to be visible from the road. Um, I'm sure all of you have been to some sort of a governmental type park. Um, the first facility that we're looking to possibly have put in is a <coughs> restroom facility. Um, working with the banner on um, what Madison County wants for specs versus the state of Georgia. Um, it's a ROM tech type of design. It's heavy timber, um, stone halfway up, um, metal roof. Uh, it's a, something appealing to the eye. And then eventually we'd like to possibly put a, a Timber frame south bar. I have not no. Just make sure I heard you correctly. No, no visibility from the neighbor. Yeah. Um, so the property itself, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to see it, but hmm. basically out of 20 acres, or three acres, right smack dab in the middle of it, where it was logged out about 25 years ago. Hmm. You can't even right now. You can't really see anything. <coughs> You can catch a glimpse of the truck running in and out of the mills, but you can't see anything. I guess the, the two, are you talking, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I guess the two biggest complaints from neighbors would come from music, open air. Will that be inside or outside? Yeah, inside. Yeah. Inside. Yeah. And alcohol. Will you be serving alcohol? Uh, we, we don't. We yeah. don't have a liquor license. Uh -huh. I didn't know if you'd pursue that. Okay. No. Um, actually, no. Why not? Okay. So you had to you'll build something and then if you have any music it'll be inside. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Have you is this your first time doing something like this? In this scale, yes. Any other questions? In the previous meeting the biggest concern was the noises that are around our facility interrupting our venue. That was the question that was brought up with the feed metal trains, trucks. Radar, the donkey down the end of the road, you can hear him sometimes. <laughs> Other than that, I don't see any problem with him. All right. All so, that's that's good. Good. I, I think that when we discussed, you talked about this is more or less what you envision as a family friend, friendly type. Oh, yeah. 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 <clears throat> and then uh, I guess the, uh, is the bank, if you had somebody bring in food and all that, will be up to the people that are actually renting the. the oh yeah, and yeah, we won't cater or anything like that. You just rent the space and yeah. the facility. We we've had in the past, and I, I think I'll just go ahead and clear there. Uh, a lot of times, and especially in this part of the the state, we have we have. Uh, um, there are those that desire to have rodeos and things like that. And, and, and again, it starts off as a private venue and it migrates into something else. And I think that's just, they're just trying to get a feel for what, you know, what it was that you had envisioned having on the rodeo. Well, it, it, it's loosely coined as a rodeo, but I don't, I mean, there are animals there. There are animals there at some point. Yeah. No, okay. I, and that's why I'm saying that it sounds like they're asking, they're just trying to, to whittle down. Okay, I'll give you a shot here in just a minute for anybody that might speak. Uh, you'll have the last chance, okay? All right, thank you. All right. Is there anybody else here tonight that would like to speak in favor of this application? Anybody know? All right, we'll open the floor for anybody that wants to speak in opposition to it. Is there anybody here tonight that would like to oppose this? Okay. With that, I'll ask Mr. Metz if he's satisfied. Is there anything you wanted to add, or is he satisfied with the uh, commission going ahead? Go. Um, the 
for those who are questioning, uh, we started planning this in 2013. Um, we've looked at properties all over the place. Um, a year ago, we spent, we drove 1,900 miles and didn't leave Jefferson, or Jackson, Borough, and Bartholomew County. Like, so we've done a lot of history, a lot of homework looking. Uh, we spoke with the people around us, the ones that would be affected by this. And, and there was a couple that came to the uh, uh, planning and zoning. Planning and zoning. Yeah. Uh, um, but the people were pretty excited about it. <coughs> they had to come see it. Any other questions you all got? All right. Thank, all right. You. thank you, sir. And with that, we'll. Um, Hearing public hearing and open up the. Uh, I think I said that wrong earlier. Open up the uh, our meeting portion of this and entertain a motion. And the, the application is uh, requesting a conditional use for the event, an event venue on this 20-acre parcel, which is currently zoned A1, and it's on Map 98, Parcel 3301, Corner of Russell Road and Cooper Road in District <coughs> Four. So with that. I'll uh, open the floor for an entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion further from the uh, commissioners? That's what this conditional use permit is under. It's under that event hall. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Any other comment, question, discussion? All right. We're going to go ahead and vote. Vote uh, is to uh, grant this, uh, approve this request for conditional use. Uh, Commissioner Allen. Yes. 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 <coughs> All right. That's good. We're done on that one. Then. Okay. Second item there, Chairman Houston. Mr. Chairman, the uh, second rezone request is Chris Jones is representing Calvary Properties. They requested to rezone their 1.53 acre parcel from B business to R1. Property is located on Highway 72 East Comer in District 4. Vote of the Planning and Zoning Commission was a vote of five to zero to recommend approval of this reason request. Okay, with that, I'll uh, offer uh, uh, Chris Jones an opportunity to uh, speak for a representative. Anybody? Okay. Is there anybody in attendance that would like to? Uh, speak in favor of this reason. Open up the floor for anybody that would like to speak in opposition to this reason. All right, not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. And, uh, oh, go ahead. I have opposition. I just have a question for this. It is. Uh, so just outside of Carlton on uh, 72. Um, if she's, if Ms. Forson's got a map, it'd make it easier. Yeah. I will say the property is adjacent to Highway 72. I'd like to um, speak in support. I don't uh, think Mr. Jones is here, so we will go 
ahead and uh, close out the hearing and uh, bring it before the uh, commissioners for a vote. Then the uh, application is to rezone 1.53 acre parcel from business to residential R1. And again, located Highway 72 East, Comer, District 4. With that, we'll open the floor for a motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion on this one? Oh, quick question. In the documentation that was provided, it looks like it's, it's, it's bounded by 72 or really. Is there any restrictions on coming off one way or the other? I mean, is it mm -hmm. just Come off either way. If this wasn't further out, if it was like it was closer to town, or maybe in Calder, down 72 that way, it might have a little bit more of an issue because it is on that highway corridor. What I've gathered, this was given in an adjoining property for zone business from the very beginning when zoning came in place. There's never been a business on the property, gotcha. um, it's never been sold for business. Right. and. That's why he and that they bought it and they want to put a home on it for resale. Yeah, location is everything right here. Might be. Okay. Any other comment? We'll go ahead and take a vote then. Vote is to approve the rezone application. Commissioner Strickland. Yes. 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 All right. Very good. And again, I am assuming that the zoning amendment was up. Let's go ahead. Just a couple more things. Um, Sorry. The, uh, the zoning amendment was from there is item three. We, uh, we stopped that. We did not uh, proceed any further with that. And also at our last uh, business meeting, for your information, uh, I was reselected as the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission in Canola Scott Jr. was reselected as the vice chairman. Very good. Congratulations. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Appreciate your willingness to and come up. Okay. We're going to move on to statements and remarks uh, from citizens on an agenda item. We have uh, four items. Items four, five, six, and seven. The first will be uh, an additional homestead exemption for senior citizens. Filling a vacant position on our planning and zoning commission. Uh, an increase of $1,500 uh, to the salary of our administrative assistant uh, position at the county extension office. And then the last one was to create a $5,000 education and training line item in facility one. So with that, I'm going to open the floor and as much as we can, um, I'm going to say it, we'll see if we can if somewhat adhere to this. Uh, keep your uh, remarks as close to three to four minutes if possible, and, uh, and if not possible, I'll have to get down now with that. So, um, but I will open the floor at this time for anybody that may like to make a comment or a remark on any of those four items I just mentioned. Okay, Commissioner Strickland. Yes. Commissioner Strickland. Yes. We'll move right on past statements and remarks. And we're into our new business, and at this time, I'd like to ask uh, our uh, tax commissioner, uh, Mr. Lamar Dalton, to come forward and uh, present the uh, information for the homestead exemption. Good evening, y'all. Good evening. We, uh, we turned in the tax a good while back, but y'all looked over it. Just sort of see the direction we were headed with everything. Uh, had a meeting Thursday tonight, bad weather, didn't you get know, a pretty big turnaround, but I think most of us had a chance to go over the numbers, look and see where we at. About a year and a half ago, we started working with the community. We got some of the folks here, Lord, Canones, Larry, Lee, looking at a way to provide a little bit of tax relief for everybody here in the county and whatever we can do. And we started working toward a fair market value 
evaluation freeze, and we work on it. This gives me a meeting, I guess, what? 15, 16 meetings, they're doing that. Larry Cox and I were at the Mother Ridge Pro of the Lake tonight back in November and talked about how we wish we had had something on that ballot for the turnout or whatever. Well, the next day, I decided I would try and run the numbers and really start working on it. And the easiest way to check the fair market evaluation freeze was to look at board equalization freeze. Okay. You go to the board equalization, they find in your favor, or they hold your value, that value is held for three years, unless there's a schedule change, build on the property, add acreage, subtract, whatever. So there was, went to the assessor's office, and I got Robin to print me off all of the fair market value holders of 2017. There was 128 of them. And then you pack it, you see the list of the DOE holds, and then I ran a representative sheet. I picked out values from $35,000 to $616,803. And when I ran the numbers, including the bill rate, and those respective years on those held values, I'd say the average value in difference is probably going to be somewhere in the $6 range for those three years. Okay. Now, if you're looking at fixing that value over 25 years, it's the principal amount of money. The thing is, though, we decided early on, looking at the dynamic of census data and stuff like that, that 870 was where we were going to target this exemption. If you're 70 years old, and I hope you got 20 years, but if you don't, this wasn't really much of an impact to you as far as values go. So I sort of took it on myself to try to find something that would make more sense for the elderly here in the county. Once we, once we, once I decided, and I, I, I hate that I sort of stepped outside my bounds over the committee and stuff like that, but due to the nature of the election or whatever, this had to come up pretty quick. I started looking at exemptions, just an additional exemption over the 10,000 at the L3s and the L4s get. And y'all understand the differential between them. L3s and L4s, right? The L3s are greater than $10,000 income, not including pension and Social Security, okay? The L4s are what some people call lower income, but that's a bit of a misnomer because of pension and Social Security, some of those folks are pretty comfortable. Some folks might have pushed them a little bit when they file the application because they don't really go back and check income on a lot of that stuff. So some of the L4s probably need to be on that other column too. Now when the, the committee was formed, the board of education members, board of commissioners members, myself as an advisor, just people from all walks of life, the board of education was pretty adamant on income basing. Okay? But the reason I included everything in this number right here is, is everybody knows you know we are we are agriculture based county for the most part well 539 540 whatever it was 552 on that l3 for people making greater than ten thousand dollars a year excluding pension and social security now that's going to be your poultry farmers that's your business owners now if you're still working at 70 years old you need to have some consideration, okay? Somebody needs to take that into account. Now, there was 59 we didn't have data for. And when you look on over, when we get on into it, every dollar amount that I've given you today is assuming that those 220-odd some people that they don't have a birthday for are 70 years old. And that's not the case, okay? It's just not. When we started working on this, I believe it was 1,460 some odd people. Confirmed now we have 1,416, which means people have sold property. You've probably got nursing home situations, people going to trust. First one thing to know is just protecting yourself when you're in the I gave them a lot of facts and figures that probably seem a little bit confusing, but Assuming that every 
every single one of those 227, 228 people, 70 years old, this would impact 1,642 souls in this county. Okay? At today's mill rate, which you don't know what a mill rate's going to be next year until you got your digest information, everything like that. The impact is 409817 dollars 14 Now, when you break that out over the tax bills, okay, 1,800, 552 tax bills, you're looking at $22.09 a tax bill to cover this exemption. But there's been a little bit of confusion, okay? None of this $409,000 is coming out of any of the tax authorities' pockets. You know, anytime you deal with an exemption, you're taking value here and transposing it. You're moving it away from these people right here that's going to rent the it's going to reap the benefits of the exemption, and it's going to everybody else that pays the tax base, okay? It's not like we're pulling money out of anybody's coffers. It's not like anybody's going to have to pony up any money. Uh, took a lot of heat over the last three days from one of the taxing authorities, and no matter what I said, nobody listened, okay? The reason I put the $8,000 on there, when I talked to Adam Powell about this, he said, why don't you do like Franklin can and just do it for $10,000. And I told Representative Powell, I know that would make it easy on him, but I can cover this $8,000. Okay, I'm fixing to show y'all how I can cover it. But that $409,000, if it was a loss in value, doesn't really amount to a hill of beans. There's two things that we're going to do. First of all, we're going to ask for a resolution for a November due date. And over the last five years, we've got the digest down 30, sometimes 37, 38 days over the 60 days required by the state. And what that's going to do is it's going to put collections <coughs> two months ahead of where they are right now. All right. By the last week of November, I've got the link letters out there. 30 days from that, five phase come on. Here's what's important about that. And a few of these are paid. That right there is your single year delinquencies right there. I sent out 20, might as well say 2,800 letters today. Single year delinquencies. And we're going to pursue them harder than we ever have. You know, a lot of these single year stuff, people wait <coughs> until they get the income tax. People want to pay and the county makes money, all your taxing authorities make money off the interest and penalties. In prior year collections, that's 2017 back, I collected $638,000 last year, okay? That's a lot of interest and penalties, okay? That's money that doesn't figure into your current digest every year, but it's money that you were owed from the year before and the year before and the year before, okay? So, yeah. That's a lot of money, but it was y'all's money to begin with. <coughs> money to begin with. Uh, with the same year collections, instead of being shooting for 95, 96% and 120 days past due, we're looking at 99% for the tax sale in June. We'll have a spring tax sale, we'll have a June tax sale, and then we just get ready for the next digest. Once you approach that, give an example, right now we are 98 and heavy chains almost 99% collected on 2018. But there's still $265,000 out there in real money to be collected. Okay? So from now on, we're going to try to have every bit of that collected by June. Any y'all got any questions about anything so far? All right. Now here's the deal. The resolution. It's going to take advertising on my part. We're going to have to kill it. The main thing we're going to have to do is everything we can let folks know we're looking at no room to do that this year. Not a lot of faith out there in what I can do. But I think over the years, if you look at it, I, I want to prove myself when it comes to collecting the income tax. And they got a good staff, so it gives me the opportunity to get out there and knock on doors and talk to people do what needs to be done. We uh, we ended up, I set a goal this year based on last year's collection 
of three million dollars in the land tax. That's no home drill and personal property. We collected almost three point two million dollars this year. All right, and we're changing up some stuff now to where we're going to pursue Freeville Mobile Home Student Master Court. It's only about one hundred fifty, one hundred sixty thousand dollars, but it's real money. It generates fine money. Okay, it generates money for the county. The main thing you need to know is on 2500 FIFOs, $17 of that filing fee rolls back. Okay? So, you know, you got potential right there. My advertising fees, I got, might not have a million dollars package, but I went and pulled my budget stuff since I took off in 15, and I managed to give the county back $73,000 over those four or five years, five years. A lot of that is those filing fees and stuff like that. In addition to that, all my city collection money rolls back to the county, which is only about $10,000 over the life of the whole project. But this year, we're picking up commerce, which means 100% of the tax digest is all the cities that have property tax and the county. Okay? That'll be additional money rolled back to the county. The reason I started doing that was in, in the performance of my job. I come across, boy, you know, y'all work your districts and you do a good job with it, but I see everybody. Everybody comes in, buys tags, everybody comes in, pays the property tax. I go out and talk to people first one thing or another. But there's so many people in this county who are doing everything they can and, and not getting ahead. You know, property values, talked to Robin this morning, and Property value is probably going to increase again. You know, fast and houses come on the market, they sell it. And I guess that's good if you want to sell, but if you want to live here, you're at the mercy of the market. You know, that's what drives the property value. We don't have business, we don't have the industry, we don't have commercial, we don't have anything to offset what this county needs. So, the one thing that we do better than anybody in the world is we try to take care of each other. Kid gets served up around 29 last week. They already planned the fundraisers for them. That thing you think of. House burns down. Everybody pulls together. We got a core of charity. You know, everybody talks about this being the evil empire, but we have a charity here in this courthouse, you know, and, and we raised, I think it was like $11,000 a year for last for people here in the county. And kids in prison did a good bit this year. Had the same Claus thing for the kids this year. But, the one thing we do better than anybody is we help people here. And that's all I'm asking you to do. And I'd rather not see you based on income because those numbers are skewed. What you're looking at right there are skewed numbers. Okay? I can't guarantee you that some of them male fours don't need to be in that other column. I can't guarantee you that some of them male fours aren't making bank. You know, I mean, Social Security and pension, it's not out of the realm of possibility. All I can tell you is I know eventually every single person in this county, God willing, will be 70 years old. Okay? Eventually you will. And this is just going <coughs> to ease a little bit of burden on the people that we have out there. You know, this is for man passed away over on Transco Road. He uh he and his wife married 60 some odd years and never had a child. Paid school tax, had a hundred and twenty acre farm water over there like you wouldn't believe. And he sold it down to near about nothing just to make sure he could pay his taxes. And then, you know, if they had to go to nursing home, had something fall back on. Well, he passed away without ever having to build a tax relief. His wife's living with a sister down in your district now. The lady up on Farm Road, who's living off $400 a month, her husband didn't work public work. He was a farmer. I only worked about seven or eight years. You know, she's drawing four or five hundred dollars a month. She's trying to make it. The lady down in Teoli, 72 years old, raising three grandkids. And she's only drawing six hundred dollars a month. You know, and I can't tell you how many people in this county are having to close their chicken houses down because they can't afford to update. So yeah, they they may be in that L3 bracket right now but they won't be next year, you know. You know, and that's another thing, too. A lot of these people, 
I want to show me them files, this exemption. I had a lady come in the office today fussing at me because she didn't know she could get an early exemption. I said, all we got to do is read the tax bill. There's on there. You know, but people just don't pay attention. So, long story short, I would appreciate it because of the timeline, and I know this is an agenda setting meeting, but I would love to have a vote on this for the simple reason that if it passes, we can get it to the May election. We can get it on the ballot in May. And then let the people who can decide similar to the Sunday sales if they support their one or not. And that's all I mentioned for the chance to let the people decide. Anybody got any questions? Does, does anybody have any questions at all? From yeah, one more. Help, yeah. help me understand or help other people that may be challenged a little bit with, with some of the understanding. When you say you can cover this, do you envision this being kind of a blip in the, in the, in the stream, if you would, and be able to cover it with collections? Um, I could cover the 409 right now, Commissioner, but here's the thing you need to remember. Every single diet disc we've had since 2015, and I can get you doing the payment stats. I give them to the running them every week. But if you look at your building payment statuses, and it's different with the board commissioners because y'all got stuff with having to raise the mill rate. Everybody bugged out left it for y'all today, okay? Board of education, not so much. If you look at the numbers on the building and payment status, it will show you what happens when the mill rate stays the same and the digest and the values of up, 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 and up. Now, I will tell you this. If you have a readjustment like 2008, you're going to be forced again into a moratorium like the governor does. Your ratio is going to run up to about 40%. You're going to be stuck. Your appraisal staff can't do nothing. Whatever you buy that piece of property for is a sale price. Everything holds for three years. So conceivably, with a readjustment, downturn, whatever, this could have a big impact. I'd be lying to you if I said it didn't. But regardless, if I'm tax commissioner or anybody else, single year collections is going to be the rule of law, I guess, for want of a better word. And it's there. You can count. This is actually a better year. Usually we run in there about 35 to 3,800. You know, the point is, if I clean all that up with a, with a closer due date, then everybody in the taxing authorities, the cities, everybody else gets their money quicker. I mean, it, it rolls into the budget a whole lot quicker, and it's just back up to me. But there are instances where a, well, it's no different conservation of the exemptions you have now. If another 2008 hits and the market tanks, then they're going to hit you hard. You know, they are. I mean, you sort of build your reserve for rainy days, but we're not there yet. You know, we don't we don't have anywhere near. <coughs> I was, I guess, fortunate enough to be a single contract for a number of years, and I watched communities and never thought they'd ever have trouble with anything. Just wiped off the face of the earth, Greensburg, Kansas. You know, uh, in the middle of nowhere, but tornado hit was a mile and a half wide. If you don't have money in the bank, you can't operate. You know, you can't do anything. You have no infrastructure or anything like that. So there's a lot of stuff y'all have to take into account beyond this right here. They all, all I can, all I can hang my head on is what I can do is tax the And I promise you, another thing too, this will not take effect until January of 2021. This is not going to happen this year. Okay, so they, no need for people to discuss a mail rate increase. There's no need to really panic or worry or anything like that. I would say give us this time to show what we can do. Okay? And uh, just anything you do is for it, I appreciate it. The other question I guess I have is just... Because of the exemptions, the way they're set up, again, this just help me understand. Because 
income and pension and there there's certain exemptions that are already set aside they are. and it doesn't count into the equation they are. so you know the, the bill gates the world that may not actually earn a income that's right but have certain have assets or what that doesn't matter anyway so no. i mean is that well i'm just trying to make sure everybody understands what you're asking the first here's, the, here's the issue with income based just about bet you the majority of those 530 of what they are right there Farmers in conservation, they find they already get the big of a break in well on the taxes. And they are, but without that break on the taxes, you can't afford to be an agriculture. You know, so yeah, there's always a chance that you got somebody sitting on the pile out there that's gonna reap the benefit of this right here. But those few people are far outweighed by the people that need this right here. What you're looking at. That today's mill rates incorporated and unincorporated. If you're living out in the country unincorporated, it's about a $248 impact over what you already have. Okay, so and incorporated would be about 261 bucks additional off of the tax bill. Now, on some of your lower income property, that will take out most of the tax value. It will. But those pieces of property are still there. When somebody passes away, God forbid, it goes back to S1, break the schedule. And the appraisal staff we have now does a pretty good job of tracking. You know, I've, I've prosecuted more, more breaches in homestead exemption and military exemptions and stuff like that. And I have really conservation. Most times people preach conservation, they know they're going to do it, and they just figure that's the cost of doing business. But they've done a pretty good job of picking up homestead violations and stuff like that. And I think after speaking to Robin, when we first, I decided to go this direction right here. By law, they can request income information and stuff like that, you know. And it don't put a whole lot more work on to do that. So there's ways that we can tighten things up, okay. As far as conservation goes, it's the biggest exemption. It hits us. I mean, it just... Just the way it is. I got the conservation on the wife's farm, you know. Without it, we probably couldn't afford to keep it. Uh, the smaller parcels, the years and years and years and years <coughs> ago, were allowed to be in conservation or looked at every time people come in to renew now. They make the effort to go out and ride them, you know, they, they look at them. They've had most of the appeals that you see. And they've only had a couple of hundred pills last three or four years every year are denials of conservation. People want to go to the board of equalization see if they can get the conservation back or see if they can get conservation on small parcels. So they're doing a pretty good job of picking up a lot of this right here. Not that you can't always do better because you can't, you know. And there are going to be people that have slipped through the cracks on this one right here. But I think the amount of good that would be done on the other side is far outweighs that. Good. Any other questions? It's a lot to throw at us in two weeks. Though. It's, it's, it's a really, lot. It's a that's lot. the one thing that, you know, and I want to, you know, make sure with the holidays and, and everything, you know, it's, I haven't really had, even had a chance to even talk to the folks in my my district. And, you know, and I appreciate what, what you're wanting to, to do. And um, it's a whole lot to take in. And... You know, make a decision within two weeks. Quite honestly, I, I don't know. I just and then the November due date. You've been in that office since you said 2015. How do you think people are going? To well, pay? most people fuss about having the bills come due to Christmas if you want to approve by it. And the argument with that is, you had it since September 7th. But the people. That fuss the most about it, fuss about the bills being due at Christmas. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't go to maybe split building or something like that. If y'all wanted to do that, it would be a bosom bear to incorporate. But there's ways to, to do that too. Now, what you're going to hear on the November due date, I just about bet that somebody's going to say, a lot of people are going to say, well, we can have 12 months to come up with this month. You know? And I have an argument like that. You know, they don't have a level. So, you. Franklin County does a November debate. Bobby's bill's coming on November 15th. 
five and maybe 20, but that's when we do our accounting. But he is 98, 99% collected by February every year. And he personally, the same year collection. Bobby's letters went out. I was prepared to send my letters out on county GRP deal, but matter of fact, there's a copy of that check right there. So we're not doing November tonight, right? Well, no, but somewhere down the road, I'm going to ask for November. There's a letter. Okay. I've already asked for it. Tell me the time when you want to discuss it. And I do realize for two weeks, didn't give me a lot of time, but the rate would plumb up till two months ago. I was pretty convinced that fair market value freeze was going to be what would make a good impact to the people of the county. And because I didn't, and I, I hate to say this, but I'm afraid to buy a trade, and it just occurred to me that I had a way to check this and prove my point. When I run the numbers, I could not prove my point. And that's why this whole timeline is sort of throws off shape. And you just know a lot of people in the positive people in the community. Folks to the county, because I could have, I could have checked this back in the summer, and we wouldn't be having this discussion now. That's just the way it works. But for clarity, the, the request before us is... The request before you is a vote. Michael's already brought up a resolution. Y'all got copies of it. To put it on the ballot. To put it on the ballot in May. And if it, if it passes, if it, it passes, become effective January 1st, 2021. There's a copy of the resolution in the bank. Yeah, let's get into the discussion. Any, any further questions from the uh, Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. What we'll do then is. Uh, we will then consider the, uh, actually we'll do it with the resolution here then, is that appropriate? So we'll, uh, the motion would be to uh, adopt this resolution, um, putting in place, and I'm just gonna, it's a very short resolution, but I, I, I specifically would just make, draw your attention to the third paragraph where it actually does break out the fact that uh, he's looking for an exemption from Madison County Avalorum taxes for county purposes in the amount of $8,000 of assessed value to homestead for residents in the county who are 70 years of age or older in addition to any local or state exemptions currently in existence. So with, with that, if uh, we'll entertain the motion to adopt this resolution as presented. Can, can you entertain a question? Uh, we could have an item three, ma'am. If, if there had been something on that, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, so I have a motion to approve. Second. So I have a second. Now, for any discussion from the commission on this. So, you know, we've been working on this for a long time, and, you know, Mark does a great job down there. And uh, I know this has changed, but the goal from the very beginning has not changed, and that was to give some support to the folks in need. And, uh, you know, I was for the Sunday sales and let people choose there. Uh, this is another chance that I don't have to choose. I can let the people in Madison County choose. Um, and uh, to be quite honest, that's a little less pressure for me. Um, but I, I totally agree with this. I totally agree with the exemption. I totally agree that Lamar talked about, I, it was explained to me about a, uh, they call it a, a big balloon tax money. When you squeeze it here, it gets small here, but it does blow up over here. And uh, I think that Folks under 70 can can cover it. I know the Mar can cover it, um, so I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's a great idea, and uh, I hope the other commissioners agree. From a personal standpoint, I don't think I could ever do anything else as important as this for the folks in that county. This is pretty much it. 
you. Can you overcome that? The, the more, can you for clarity my brain? Yeah. We talk about cover and whatnot, but truly by the time it gets implemented, and, and tell me if I'm wrong for it, but by the time this truly gets implemented, you're going to have a, you have an estimated value of what the tax digest is going to bring to the county. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to set a budget like you do normally. And those two are going to play off each other. And this is just going to be a factor in the receipts. That's all it is. Man. So, you get it. Today's money. Today's digest. Here we go. Our total net digest this year lets all exemptions. Six hundred ninety-two million one hundred twenty-five thousand seven hundred sixty-two dollars. So if you factor in, say it's worst case, if you have to factor in four hundred nine thousand dollars, you know what the impact of that six ninety-two would be? Point zero 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 five nine. Okay. So yeah, there's a twenty-two dollar nine cent impact to sixteen thousand some long time. But it's not anything that's going to break any of the taxing authorities. They're not even going to notice that because it's such a, a small amount of money. I still think those numbers are inflated too. Right? Well, they are, but, all but all I can't. I can't. I can't. I had no way of going through every single application <laughs> trying to figure out if they were actually saving <coughs> all the income based and all or anything. Uh, and that's just God's own truth. I know Frank and Kathy did 10000 but they also have a lot more business. Well, that's true. You know, so, that, I mean, I know. Okay. okay. Tell me, keep talking. No, I mean, it's okay, true. Okay, Devin, I that's, appreciate it. No, that's true. Because they do. They got an 85. That car is right there. They got business. They got income. They got everything. They compare it to us with population and conservation. But their cities are bigger. Okay? They draw a lot more income in. They do. And that's one thing I told Evan when he said, you know, why don't you just make it like Bob's? And I, I told him why I couldn't. You know, four hundred nine thousand dollars worst case, which is going to be in the three hundred thousand when it actually shakes down. I can cover just by doing my job. I can. You know, I give that every single year off that stack right there. Yeah, that's what I'm well, it ain't about retiring. <laughs> you know, I, I have to work. And I ain't going anywhere. But you don't never know when somebody else better might come along. You don't never know. Just the way it is. All right. Any other comments or questions for Lamar? That works with the discussion before we vote. So we've got a motion and a second then to approve and uh, to adopt this resolution approving the uh, homestead exemption and the bonus to you, uh, Commissioner Dodson. And Commissioner Dalton, I trust. Yes. 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 Now, I don't have a clue how to get it out of the pile. Somebody wants to help with the thing. We'll work that one. Uh, yeah. I'll take it. 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 i will Sometimes the uh, local legislative uh, legislative delegation wants to know it was unanimous. Appreciate the job. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Any comments from the full? I'm sorry. I said any comments from the full? Well, we'll uh, we'll entertain them right here if you want to say something. We'll do it. And then I'll give the other folks a chance. I just on the committee. One thing that surprised me. Well, see how many other counties have already done something for the elderly, and we got <coughs> and we got to do something. Because we had one man who was 85 years old, 400 dollars a month. That's all they got. And I mean, it, it just 
Everybody is just really interested in it. You can also let me know that now. And, uh, put it under consideration. Now we certainly will. Uh, we'll entertain that, and if not, if we run into an issue or whatever, and if it requires a little more time, we'll, we'll take that to, to, to get uh, the right person in there. So thank you on that. Uh, our next item is, uh, is it's to discuss a, it's an increase for the administrative assistant position. Ms. Ann Thorpe retired, and I believe you have a copy of the, the request from uh, Susan Goldman to the university is looking to update the, uh, the starting or the entry salary for the administrative assistant, and to that end, they've asked for a three a total of three thousand dollar increase, and that is to be uh, their request is that be divided between the board of education and the board of commissioners. And uh, I I can't speak for the board of education, but I but I understand that there's um, um, that they are open to that increase as well. So uh, so before you is, is is the information as you see it here. This is a $1,500 per year increase paid, uh, paid for by the uh, um, Board of Commissioners. And <coughs> what is not reflected in that is there are always, there's some additional like um, some ancillary uh, uh, withholding that come from that. So uh, the uh, position has been vacant, uh, well, will be vacant the month of January, uh, perhaps February, that's to be determined. So you'll you'll actually get the benefit of the salary having not been paid or not having been paid. And then uh, also the A and R. I've got to think what A and R stands for again. Agriculture and resource and agent. natural resource. And natural resource. Yeah, that's right. Uh, at the um, position formerly held by Adam Spear uh, was filled and. The new agent started on uh, the 2nd of January. 
And again, that position remained open for a number of months. So you actually have that money that was not uh, committed to. So this, um, I, I think, is, you know, again, this is, uh, you're familiar with uh, the university's uh, manner in, in trying to incorporate it, uh, increases, and they do it typically when they, uh, especially when somebody swaps out. So. That'll be for your consideration. If there's any questions or any comments on that now, we can talk about it. But uh, <coughs> I would like to say that I think it's pretty extraordinary that for three thousand dollars we're bringing up to date after thirty-two years of someone being in office, and, uh, or I should say, in a position, and three thousand dollars is all we have to increase it to bring up to modern. Well, that's sad or makes me happy. And, 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 and just to clarify, that, that you're right, that's $3,000 to be split between the Board of Education and Commissioners, but there's also an, uh, an, there is an additional increase from the university towards that position, right, too. You. So, yeah. so they're, 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 they're bringing it up, but uh, yeah, so to the tune about yeah, 6000 So, so uh, I may take my position. Yeah. Right. No, no, not, not arguing it. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you yeah, had that information. So any any other comment on that item? And of course we'll entertain this one. They are uh, going to be looking at uh, candidates and either way they're going to list this as a possible increase. So. Last item, consider creating a $5,000 education and training line item in facility one. Um, and this is, as, as we're finding throughout many of the departments in our county, uh, we need to, uh, we've talked about this with planning and zoning and other departments, we want to look to uh, start offering or the opportunity for some, some specific individualized training um, and in facility one it's, it's a, a catch-all if you will and this line item would preclude us having to put small amounts in each one of the separate departments and uh, we have uh, several items that are on the horizon that we'd like to be able to register for but uh, quite honestly I think it would be the more appropriate way to, to amend the budget to put that in a line item so that we're, we're doing it up front. And uh, to that end with the registration, there is a, a desire to, to have the board actually move on that tonight as opposed to waiting to the end of the month. So that uh, uh, we can entertain a motion if it's the, the board's desire to uh, uh, create a $5,000 education and training line item in facility zero one, and I'll open it up to that. Chairman, sure, I'd like to see this happen. I'd like to make a motion we, we do this. Um, <coughs> I, you know, when I first got in the office, you know, we have to have the continued ed and all sorts of stuff, but uh, I remember my first budget hearing a contact that I made through education and going to the mandated education. Um, met someone from Hart County, ended up saving the county about 50,000 bucks. I think you remember the, what I'm talking about. And so I, you know, I think that um, spending this money actually saves you money later, gets these folks uh, trained and educated and better able to serve the people of the county, so um, I'm all for this. I know that I think it's exciting that the board is going to do this kind of stuff. Um, I think we'll see it come back to you. I think 5,000 is, is uh, nothing compared to what can come out of it. So, it's just my opinion. Okay. I have a motion to approve. I'll second the first question. Second, and that will open the full board discussion. Is there any <coughs> thought processes or protocols that's been thought about or put in place regarding like the priorities of the department, people, certifications that need to be maintained? You know, I, like for example, my professional engineering license. I know what's got to be done every year, and that's a, it's a, something that needs to be done. It has to be done. So. I, 
how, how, how would help me understand how we're going to monitor that and, and then dole that money out. I'm not opposed to training, don't get me wrong, but I'm just curious right. on the process. On top of what he's saying, who, who will facilitate this? The department heads, or do you have the last say in this overall? So, it's just it's one. The way this is, it would be it would be like me. But uh, to answer your question, though, what what we haven't done perhaps adequately is we we, we appoint people and people volunteer and, and we're grateful that they do and we're grateful that they participate. Sometimes that we assume very very incorrectly that we will. Uh, it's almost by. Um, uh, exposure that they'll pick up and they'll learn uh, some of the, and, and, and a lot of it is out there, it's written and everything, but many positions that they jump right into and they're deciding and they're, they're, they're doing these things almost immediately and um, is, is the case and it's nobody's, it's not their fault, but uh, there'll be a lot of uh, looking to others to see how they think, what they think, whether it's right or wrong, they're gonna, they're gonna go, they're gonna look at somebody who's been doing it for a while. So, <clears throat> As far as prioritization, I don't think we've made that, uh, I don't think we've gotten to that. We, it, I don't, it has, to my knowledge, it hasn't existed. We have, you have um, medics that require very much like you're talking about, it's a licensing thing. Um, you have um, uh, certain uh, positions that require annual certification for other things. So, there, there is a, uh, there's a requirement, and I know that in some of the departments that has been accounted for. There's a line item, but uh, many times we don't have a catch-all. We don't have any place right now that that, that, that would allow us to um, uh, do uh, things on. I don't want to say on the fly, but it's, if, a, if a requirement comes up that's either unscheduled uh, or or what have you, so um, it's. It's a lot like we talked about our, you know, trying to have a, 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 a literally a road map, something that tells us as we consider uh, roads for improvement and everything, you know, that shouldn't be done annually. That should be a living document that's out there that has these things listed. So um, I, I think it's, uh, it's probably a good idea that we have a, somewhat of a repository that, that triggers, you know, when, when these things need to be done. Um, we do have in writing where we say that specific, specifically for planning and zoning members that they'll receive annual training. And we're, we're, we need to do a better job. Let me just put it that way, we do. Not that, not that we're not grateful for what they do, but I'm saying there's a lot of times where, and, and commissioners probably have a better feel for this than most people too, where the tendency is to want to vote with the heart and not with what you know is in print and what could be uh, uh, challenged in court. So it's important to know what's out there. It's important to know the intent sometimes, and and uh, we lean on our county attorney a lot for that. But each each one of us knows a little bit more. We wouldn't have to any points on. So still lean on though. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. Um, so was the $5,000, was there some reason that we came up with that amount or was that just thought that that was a sufficient amount? Or? It, 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 it's probably, there's, there, uh, we don't have a commitment right now for $5,000. There are a couple of uh, uh, sessions that, that we're looking at that would require in excess of 3000 already. Uh, we're one week into January, and that's the reason I think that we were looking just to have a little bit more than that. So, um, and and again, this is in effect an amendment because we have a, a, an approved budget that did not include this. So you have to amend the budget to approve that. As is any case, any time you know in the uh, we'll we would have to make an uh, amendment later if we wanted to do that anyhow. So that's all. Just trying. This helps plan a little bit, that's all. It is, it is. And, and that's why I'm saying, so this wouldn't necessarily pertain just sure. to those employees. It is, 
it is you. right because okay. of the general nature of that subject. So yeah. There's a motion and a second to approve the uh, creation of this line item education and training for five thousand dollars uh, commissioner kirk yes 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 yes, yes. Okay. all right we're on the roads okay i don't want to back up oh, right. seven, not an undo vote but just as an oh. item of, of notation can we make a concentrated effort to capture all the training? I say all, to get an idea of all the training that the different departments do or whatnot over the course of the year. I think it would be important for the citizens to understand that you know, it's, this money was spent, these are what we're doing, this is what we're doing. Thanks, sir. about in water oak trees up here at the Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. See here at the have you noticed? Yeah, the one that are falling to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. That's our baby, isn't it? It is. It is. That's that's Camel's property. It sure is. I'll uh, I'll have a look at that. Um, okay. um I hate to even mention this because it's the road I live on, Macedonian Church Road. But I have if, if all my neighbors all my neighbors. I know we did some recent work on that, and we fixed some potholes, mm -hmm. but there's some pretty good sized ones on the other side over there, and uh, it's all on Tripp's side, because the other side of the road is Tripp's. So. <laughs> no. no, if we can look at that road and see Got it. Did what? you get my text about Collins Brooks Road? <laughs> That's yours. I know. Anybody else? I got, a, I got two things. I got a call on uh, just road farm to look at Wagner's Grove Church Road. And then uh, I have a praise December 30th, 4 o'clock in the morning. The tree went down on Cobra Danger Road. We were lucky nobody got hurt. But one of our deputies spotted it and called out the road department to Deputy Airedale and, and Joey. Hendricks. One of our road department guys. Joey Hendricks. I apologize. Joey Hendricks. They got it going, and I was privileged to hear the chainsaw running about four o'clock in the morning. But it was good. I mean, it was, it, it's a good thing. They did a great job. Give it to No, very good. Uh, we had a, uh, a concern. I'm trying to stay away from the word complaint. We've had a concern on New Haven Church Road for uh, several months now at Limbs, and we finally got. Uh, the, uh, the bigger bucket truck out there that took those down, so that was yes. Uh, that was good. <laughs> yeah. So. Also, uh, I, I sent pictures to Derek and, and uh, Alan today, but Hilly Road is it floods and it rains and ditches need drag. Okay. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Urgent matters. Executive session. No, sir. Motion to adjourn. Oh, don't we get a talk? Okay. I, I tell you what, before we adjourn, okay. is this about any? I'm, typically, if there's an item, uh -huh. we uh, entertain statements and remarks ahead of the item. If if it's on the agenda, or is this a comment about anything that was talked about tonight? Urgent matters. 
that is not a that is not a yeah that's that, that means a free for all vote is what I'm saying yeah if, if it's an item on here the next meeting at our second meeting each month is when we entertain what you're asking for uh -huh. there's a placeholder for that at the end of that meeting not the first one but the it, it, that's right it's just general. because tip, this is a little atypical here we have uh, we have actually voted on a couple things that we would not normally do well, there's uh, a bunch of us here front four about that power plant in color right. that's nasty okay so, so meet back here i, I talked with uh, drago Dasanovich today and, and i shared with him and, and this is not new i'm not this didn't just happen this way this has been our protocol that on the first meeting, you can talk about uh, or address the board on anything that's an agenda item, but if it's not listed on there, and, 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 and while I appreciate you consider GRP an urgent matter, it, it, it gives you the opportunity the next time to, to speak. Okay. Well, I'll just throw my road in there then. Colbert, Gro um, Colbert Grove Church Road, uh, Cliff Griffith is yes, full and, and of incredible potholes. I, and I have that one on the list already. And it's sunken, and they're just going to keep happening. It's going to get worse. Right. And it's been that way 15 years. It would be awesome for something else besides patching to happen. Noted. And I'll, come, I'll be back, and we'll talk more about the other nasty news. Do, do that. We, we meet on uh, the 27th. I don't understand. So, the seven? How do we get the seven? Twenty-seven. Right. Okay. How do we get stuff on the agenda then? Uh, you don't actually. You can. You. It, it's. It, this is a commissioner's meeting, and what you have the opportunity to do is to approach the commissioners if they choose to put something on there. G, GRP has been on our agenda uh, a, a lot, and we are continuing to work. We do work with them. But uh, we offer the opportunity at the uh, end of the meeting. If it's an agenda item, you can talk about it up okay. front. If it's not, at the end of the next meeting, you can talk about it. Got it. Um, well, I hate to say that and say this. We try to leave at a reasonable time. So we, there is, in our policy, we actually say it's actually in our um, uh, Three or four minutes. It actually says three, but I'm I'm just saying per person. Per person. Okay, and, that's and fair. What we do is, and that gives everybody else a chance to talk to. You. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. We are adjourned, folks. Thank you.